ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ninja Tinman, and welcome back to Space Engineers. Yeah, um, I may have thrown up the placement of everything just a little bit, but, uh, anyway, so yeah, this is the, I believe it's the fifth weekly workshop roundup. I don't know, you'll know from the title of the video, but anyway, as always, I am bringing you three of the hottest, uh, ships or stations, and three of the hottest mods for the past week in the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page. And, yeah, it, this is going to be absolutely epic. Uh, we've got a massive ship. Looks like a massive ship over there anyway. We've got a little tiny ship, and we've got a station and Siri up there. Hi, Siri. You're awesome. You're, you're also going to be um, using one of the mod reviews, so just hang tight up there. I like you having choice because, you know, <laughs> well, I don't know where that was going, but anyway, so, well, uh, we've got three mods here today, like I said, and the first that I'm going to show you is the door pack by Ica by Icester. Um, just adds a whole bunch of new doors as these guys over here and well as you can see they're a lot handier for getting around uh, ships and stations and stuff I have no idea for the record exactly why this is a little bit off kilter but yeah so th these guys just basically make getting around ships a little bit easier we have a standard door here for comparison and uh, well he's got doors numbered one through four right now uh, so yeah he will be expanding that to include more numbers but you've also got doors for the bridge the canteen the med bay the office the reactor the refinery the storage and you've got a, a two by two door and a three by th uh, two by one door my apologies and a three by one door uh, for various things so you could like maybe couple these together and use them as like hangar bays or things like that or you could use these for extra wide hallways and that would be really really awesome so yeah it's just really really cool it makes things a lot easier to get around so you could say for instance if you had a huge huge ship and you want to give the player directions to, say, the med bay for, from the front of the ship, for instance, you could say, okay, you go through door one, take the hallway, uh, make a left through door two, and then on the other side of that will be door three, and then you head up the staircase to door four, and then uh, you round the corner, and then there's the canteen, or whatever I said at the beginning of that, I'm not sure. But, so I can see how, uh, used with the color coding system, this would make huge ships like the uh, Kestrel 2 Dreadnought, which I was going to review, but it's actually way too big. It would be an entire video on its own. But it would make ships like that just so much easier to get around. And yeah, that's the door mod review, so it's really really awesome what is up with why am I short what why what is this I'm crouching why am I crouching okay there we go that should be fixed now that was weird but yeah so this is what these guys actually look like they're not really tiny and short uh, the second of the mods that I have for you today is the RCS thruster I'm gonna be doing this review in conjunction with the review for this guy over here, the OSC Series Class Interceptor Fighter by Imrus. Uh, so right now this ship is running, I think, entirely on RCS systems. Um, no, it is not, but yeah, so RCS systems uh, for you guys who aren't perhaps uh, familiar with what that means as uh, so a reaction control system it's actually a technology that NASA and other space 
uh, companies use on their uh, on their chips and stuff they send up into space so that once they're actually in space they can they can just have uh, RCS thrusters on the ship that help it like turn and twist and do all of this stuff without having to rely on the atmosphere quite as much and it basically helps keep uh, reactions to um, well various uh, external stimuli and stuff under control by just providing a very small amount of thrust to keep everything nice and safe and stay. They mainly use it, if memory serves me correctly, they mainly use it like in the atmosphere but they can also uh, use it for very precise docking maneuvers like on the space station stuff. I don't know, I don't actually know all that much about space, just a disclaimer, but I just happen to know that. So anyway, let's um, actually cut on our primary th thrusters here and turn off our RCS thrusters. So yeah, our RCS thrusters are off, our primary thrusters are on. So let's give this bad boy a spin. Now, um, the description before we get started, the OSC series interceptor is a fast though lightly armored attack fighter. As you can see by the mass, it's only 23,789 kilograms, which is a feather. Uh, no, normally signed as escorts for weaker vessels, these quick interceptors can take care of attacking fighters and bombers with ease. Each fighter is equipped with four GAT cannons and two rocket launchers. While not the most durable combat, combat vessel, they serve a significant purpose in the OSC defense fleet. Like every other vessel in the fleet, uh, the ship uh, comes survival ready and unmodded, so it doesn't have any mods, which is awesome. So yeah, we are accelerating, and as you can see, it's pretty gosh darn quick on the acceleration front. It's not like hugely quick, it's not staggering. I've seen ships that can accelerate 0 to 104.6 in like 2.7 to 3 seconds. So it's not going to go up against those guys. But then again, those guys don't really have much maneuverability. This guy turns on a dime, an absolute dime. It stops on an absolute dime too. So let's give these uh, let's let's give these old weapon systems a little bit of a what do here. Oh yeah, as you can see, we've got well we've got four GAT cannons and they just absolutely chew through light armor amazingly amazingly quickly this is actually heavy armor here so let's try and see exactly what does as far as heavy armor is concerned yeah um as you can see it did actually put if you look very very closely it did put a little bit of a dent there so i can see how uh, how just the sheer number of GAT cans could be a pretty huge problem for larger ships. You know, you uh, even with even with just GAT cans, if for some reason your rocket launchers aren't working, then you know uh, you could get somewhere and like you could chew through glass in a heartbeat with four GAT cans. So that's pretty dang cool, and if we switch to the rocket launchers, we're just going to go ahead and decimate this review platform here. So, bang, 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 ah, all of the destruction was had that day, look at this. That's some major damage dealt there. Oh yeah, it just chews through light armor like no one's business if we go ahead and try it on heavy armor. As you can see, that heavy armor took a bit of a beating with just a few missiles there. So that's massively, massively powerful. So, and now I'm going to go ahead and showcase the reaction control system thrusters. Uh, let me uh, switch to the external view 
Good lord, we're a long way away. <laughs> Let me switch to the external view and try and see... Okay, so... The re, uh, refueling connector, it looks like, is on the bottom there. So we're going to pop into the K-menu and we're going to shut our primary thrusters off and switch our re RCS thrusters on. I should have assigned that to the hotbar. That would have been really, really awesome. Uh, but so, anyway, let's switch back to this view. And as you can see, well... Uh, perhaps a better showcase. Oh, okay. We are not going to slow down. Stop, please. Stop, please. Okay, so that reverse thrust. I actually had four RCS thrusters there, and we weren't going terribly fast. Well, I say I had four RCS thrusters. I had uh, four on each side. I had eight RCS thrusters trying to stop the ship there and it took quite a long time so they're not massively massively powerful um, but let's go and in fact I suspect yeah we've got uh, another small thruster here that's actually helping with our forward thrust so had not been for that guy well we would have been going even slower so let's pop it into the K menu, try to find that guy. Okay, there we go. So he was the forward, he was the large thruster, rather. And as you can see, I've got RCS thrusters on now. I'm pushing the W key through the bottom of the freaking keyboard, and we are not moving very quickly at all. So yeah, these guys aren't gonna help you very much if you're in a tight situation. Obviously. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look and see where the. Alright, so we just need to come forward a bit. We may not even be able to land on this because I don't think this is meant necessarily for this particular ship. And then have a turn here. Let's see how far we are to the side. Okay, so we're just a little bit off to the side and then I believe we may be able to come straight on down there. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is what RCS thrusters are for. This makes it... That's my email chime. <laughs> but, yeah, so this makes it just a lot easier to sort of align with docking connectors and so on and so forth as you can see well, it's taking quite a while but that's sort of the point uh, we're not moving forward at all I believe yeah we're knocking up against that so it's not really me whoops I bad that uh, I did it bad <laughs> okay we have destroyed not much actually that's, that's actually kind of weird. We didn't destroy that much. In fact, that may have enabled us to get out of this strange situation. Oh, yeah. Well, there is that. If you've hit a block, the RCS thrusters... Oh, we are actually... Well, we would have actually been able to connect there. But the RCS thrusters actually uh, sort of s cease working. The mod author thinks that maybe it's just due to the lack of power that they have. That once you hit a block, it's sort of almost impossible for the ship to win free of it, even though you're just sort of lightly touching it. But anyway, so we're going to get to the station last. <laughs> yeah, we were just in the station. Why not review that? Well, uh, logic. That's why. <laughs> No, no, that's that's my um, that's my reason that I use for everything because it's plainly logical. Anyway, so now we're moving on to the Vega class civilian cargo ship, and yeah, so yeah, this is pretty pretty small-ish. Now I do want to point out that that hangar bay looks like it's infinitesimal. Looks like it's absolutely tiny, but it's actually not. In fact. I tried to fit Siri in there, and 
literally this area here is just about the size of Ciri's nose. So that kind of, uh, that kind of sucks as far as size. So, and I even tried this ship here and these little sticky out bits sort of get caught on the on the sides there so this won't even fit and it's not exactly the biggest ship that I've seen it's pretty big for a blueprint in fact it's huge for a blueprint but it's not the biggest ship there ever was so um let's actually go against the grain here and head to the right and yep yeah, so to the right here you have your reactor and your gyroscope room. I hope that's not all the gyroscopes this ship has. I've fallen down into this thing. Alright, let me get out. Foolish, foolish me. So, I hope this isn't all the gyroscopes this ship has. But, you have your reactor here and it's hooked up uh, through a conveyor system so you could sort of uh, well, all these guys would store fuel and stuff, so there's plenty of fuel to go around, it seems. And so, this guy is just, yep, he's sort of hooked up there. Uh, uh, the conveyor system seems to go maybe most of the way to the ship. That's sort of finery there, so, uh, yeah, it looks like you could put some uranium in there and we'd find the reactor fuel or something, I don't know. I don't actually play survival all that much, so I don't know how refueling a reactor works. So, in fact, I ne I've never played survival in Space Engineers, uh, Guilty Admission there. But, so here are the crew bunks with, uh, those are text, no, they are not text panels. There's something there, but yeah, so, these are the crew bunks, it, uh, sleeps four, it seems like, and then up here you have your crew storage, which is very nice. Always nice to have a place to put your stuff. And then right about here is a terminal. And uh, so you can look up primes on the extranet. And then here are just some passenger seats. Nice place to sit down. I'm noticing though a distinct lack of anything resembling a canteen. So the description says that this is um, and that this is meant to haul goods between colonies, but with our canteen, I don't think it would be very good for like long hauls, obviously. It would basically just have to be a single day haul. So, that kind of sucks. You do have a med bay though, so there is that. Um, although it would be amazing to have a canteen, but then again, this ship doesn't have any mods whatsoever, so you can't really expect anything too, too in-depth. So let's go ahead and hop into the cockpit here. As you can see, like I said, pretty decently big ship. It's not, it's not huge or gigantic or anything. Acceleration, though, is glacial. It's 1,117,000. 770 kilograms, and yeah, I just used the word glacial twice in the same in the same video, so I'm a newlet. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and write me a new one in the comments, guys. I won't, I wouldn't mind because I am a little bit of a newlet. I've only done a few videos on this before, so just please be a little bit gentle, please, please. So we are just up to. 34, 35 meters a second. Now let's see how it is on slowing down. Well, it's actually faster on slowing down than it is on the acceleration front, but we may be able to remedy that with Sec 10's S Thruster 3. And so let's go ahead and hop out here. Now this, this uh, thruster, yes, that's a word. This thruster is absolutely giganto massive the force magnitude 2,700,000 max power consumption 10.72 to make it you need 150 steel plates I'll just bring it up right now so you can look um, you need well uh, like I said 150 steel plates 100 construction components 40 large steel tubes and 1,360 
uh, thruster components. So let's face this guy around like guess so. And okay, so all that stuff's back over there. So we're gonna have to change direction, head back there if we don't want to lose everything. Oh, cool symmetries on the ship. That's always handy and helpful. And we'll just have another two of you there. So, I know, they don't look quite right with this ship, but whatever. It's going to be absolutely badass if the fact that it has a force magnitude of 2,700,000 is any indication. Is any indication. Any indication. Wow. That's a good one, Brain. That is a brilliant one. <laughs> so, why does my light keep going to the left there? That's weird. Anyway, so we're gonna have a huge metal thrust. <laughs> Look at this! Look at these thrusters! They're giant! They are massive, massive thrusters. I think that's almost, almost as big as the Titan engine. Um, I don't know. Uh, come on then, come on, turn around. Arrow key fun. Yay! And then, okay, here we go. Let's see. Oh, good lord! <laughs> Look at the acceleration! This is ridiculousness! Oh! Woo! So as you can see, these guys are absolute ultimate badasses as far as acceleration is concerned. Man, we were up there flying absolutely honking. Something is making some weird noises. But we were absolutely honking there. As far as acceleration, that is some serious zero, zero, zero to 60 time. I want to do it again. Dang, man. I tell you what. If you ever wanted a ridiculously fast, massive ship, just coat the outside in these. It's absolute. They're absolutely ridiculous. Oh, that's cool. That is majorly awesome. Unfortunately, I do want to point out that... But I do want to express the opinion that they are a little cheap as far as construction components are concerned. So, they do seem a little bit OP, a little bit cheaty, but hey, whatever. So, now we are going to the Industrial Hangar by 911 Minecraft. Now, this is actually his first upload to the Space Engineers Steam Workshop, and he's already on the most, most popular one week page so hats off to him man hats off to him so yeah this hanger I'm actually just gonna drop down here so I can see so I can show you how huge this place is I'll say it's huge this really puts into perspective how big Siri is because that's literally that hole is about the size of her nose and she only gets wider uh, the farther back you go so Siri is damn big she's a big girl she's also a big sexy girl <laughs> uh, yeah hitting on starships that's my thing you know um, if you don't want to hear people hit on starships then don't watch the uh, Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. It's just what I do. I hit on Siri all the time, like every single freaking episode. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is the massive, staggeringly huge hangar, and these are all uh, docking connectors here. Well, docking connectors, refueling connectors. So, like I tried to do with this, you you could just. Uh, sort of use these to uh, to dock up with uh, with the station and get refueled and everything and I believe they are all actually hooked up so you can't actually refuel they're not just there for aesthetics and then obviously the big middle section would be for starships this would actually be a fantastic place to make ships because it gives you uh, you get a little bit of a catwalk there, so you can sort of look around it, and you've got uh, you've got obviously a solid floor under you, which is always beneficial. And then uh, you can use the size of the hangar all around your ship to sort of 
gauge the overall size of it, make sure it's not too big to be practical. So that's really kind of cool. And, well, the same holds true for the rest of this station. I mean, it's... I actually explored all of it. It's not massive as far as, like, rooms go, but it does employ quite a few nifty features. The first of... The first of which are the elevators, and I'll check this. Uh, this button panel here, you can close the door. Uh, open and close the doors there, they come closed by default. So they're open, so that's something now I explored. And then you can press this button here, and then uh, take the elevator down. And it's just slow enough so that you don't actually come off of it is really really cool so if you hook a right here then at the end of this massive hallway and these are uh, I believe these are actually the refueling connector connectors for the starships uh, for the uh, or, yeah for the small ships up there uh, so they've got uh, they've got uh, large containers all connected to them so you can actually refuel uh, and then at the end of the procession here at the end of the line you've got reactors two of them uh, large reactors powered by batteries here so you don't have to worry as much as about fuel as long as you've got power in your batteries then you are 100% good to go and then down here is where you would control the reactors and do all sorts of uh, other stuff related to refueling starships. I wonder what this button does. Uh, if you don't know what it does, press it. That's my logic. Oh, it, clo it closes the doors. All right. I was thinking it was going to do something related to this here, but no. It just closes the doors. I, know, I don't think I actually noticed that button panel before. And obviously you've also got batteries back here. So there's even more power for your reactors. And then we're gonna... Uh, where's the door actually? I don't know where the door is. I don't know where the door is. Alright. Okay, there it is. I, I was wondering because I didn't see a door. And then... Where going to go back up and by the way the elevator across across the way here does actually lead down into the same room that we were just in uh, so that one goes to the same place so no use uh, using it but this guy which I left up for some reason actually goes to hinger control which is up there, so... Alright, and he's gonna come right on down there, and then we're gonna hop on and take it back up. The elevator to heaven. And... Yep, we are right a rooney here. So, hmm, the door's here rather than uh, over there. Okay, sure. Why not? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did not notice this before. Are these... Oh, so these are... Well, you could use these doors to sort of... Uh, to sort of make it hard for people to, like, invade your hangar control area. That's kind of neat. That is really kind of neat. So if you've got any hostiles, you could just... Uh, you could just hold your staff, well, uh, yeah, maybe here, or in here, and the bad guys would have a little bit of a hard time breaking through. So that's kind of cool. Well, I suppose they could open the doors from here, but you could maybe break that down or remove it somehow. You could have one guy sacrifice himself to the cause to break this. And then, yeah, that's really rather kind of cool if you're into sacrifice. <laughs> also, if you're into protecting your own skin. So, yep, 
Here's Hangar Control, very nice, very scenic view of the Hangor there. And then if you go over here, you get to actually look down on the Hangar and uh, whatever, uh, whatever's occupying it. So you could go up here and you could maybe look over a ship for damage and it would be awesomely amazing and very, very convenient. So that's rather, rather cool. And I do just want to point out that this, uh, this whole aesthetic, I know every time I make a video and I go in like a, into like a big station or a big ship or whatever, I, uh, I talk about the aesthetic. The aesthetic to me is a very, very important part of, uh, of science fiction universes and uh, and just science fiction anything pretty much so yeah if it's got a gangster aesthetic like this does especially down in the in the uh, reactor bay in the refueling management thingy uh, then it really really helps it definitely scores points in my book I mean down here well well, let's just go ahead and jump off. Why not? And then, do you open the door? Yes, you do. See, this is a really cool looking area. And that's... Looks are very, very important to me. So, yeah. This has definitely got them. And, uh, just hats... Like I said, hats off to Minecraft... Uh, 911 Minecraft for getting onto the Space Engineers Steam Workshop most popular one week uh, list. That is so awesome. Uh, just uh, He just came out swinging with this. His very, very first anything that he's ever uploaded to the Space Engineers Steam Workshop and it turns out to be absolutely freaking awesome. And it's on Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup, so definitely hats off to uh, 911 Minecraft for uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal job with this station. And I'm definitely gonna be watching because if this is if this is his first try, then this guy is gonna be packing heat later on once he gets a little bit more familiar with space engineers this is this is stuff that most people who've played space engineers for a long time find, find hard to do and this is sick man sick job so anyway uh if you like this video then go ahead and bitch slap that like button if you really really like it and you want to see more go ahead and hit that subscribe button hey I've been MC Zinman, you've been awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next video, MCZ out. It's the one and only